ASMR. So, it's pretty much the same as my normal let me put you to sleep, except I'm whispering. I suppose that's it. That's the difference. So, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. Just to let you know that my website is jasonnewland.com. There's a little bit of background sound in the background. Uh, the counsellor there cutting the grass and trimming the hedges and stuff like that. So I'm not sure whether they're going to be in my garden but they're like around at the moment so we will see if it does start getting noisy then I'll just have to cut the recording short what I think I would do today is have a little look through the news because it's still morning time here so I'm going to use Press Reader, the app. You know, I got Press Reader and I did, I got a free, I think a free week. So I signed up. I forgot about it. So I've paid for the month, which is about £27 or something like that. Kind of easy. So let's just have a look at the the date. Actually, oh, let's have a look at the Wall Street Journal. The problem with this is the problem with reading newspapers online, especially when I haven't actually uh, looked at it first. Is it's not always easy to find stuff that's light-hearted. Oh, this is something that interests me. So this is the Wall Street Journal, Thursday the August the 18th, the August 2022. And it says volume CCLXXX. Who knows that? Who knows what that means? Is that for Romans? In case it gets sent back in time. Or they find a Roman in ice. Defrost him. And <laughs> defrost him. And say, okay, here's something to read. And they say, no, don't, I don't like that one. It doesn't have my numerals. What do you mean? The Roman numerals. The Roman numerals. I said, oh, it's okay, the Wall Street Journal's got the Roman numerals in it. Okay. CCLXXX. How pretentious it is. This is the US edition. I'd have thought that all of the Wall Street Journal would be a US edition. It's an American newspaper. Oh, well. It's not US. <laughs> it gets printed all around the world. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, this is something that I saw on the news yesterday in the UK of England, Commonwealth Britain. And it's about NASA sending another rocket into space to return to the moon. After something like 50 years. 50 years. Which makes me wonder. Did they really land on the moon? Because I'm thinking. Yeah, they put that much effort into landing on the moon in. 
was it 1969? I was born in 1970. Yeah, I know, I don't, I know. <laughs> it's fine. Very youthful, but yeah. He's, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. You'd have to, no, oh, your compliments. Ouch. And this, they're sending a rocket in. Big old rocket. See, I'm not really into conspiracies. I'm not a, like a conspiracy buff. And I was talking to my friend yesterday, and I, I said to him, you know what? What I'd really like is for there to be an amnesty on bullshit. So that every country, every secret agency, you know, around the world, all just came forward and said, this is what is real. This is what we've really discovered. Here's a spaceship that we discovered, or we never discovered a spaceship. It was all just lies. Uh, just have an amnesty for bullshit and just come forward and say, there you go. So we can just see for ourselves, you know, and if there is extraterrestrials, and if there is a potential of problems in the future from a more superior race, then surely that could bring the world to Together. Oh, together. We could all get together. Instead of whew, whew, aim those missiles. Instead of like that. Upwards. As opposed to at each other. You know what I mean? Just an idea. Not that I think that we should aim miss missiles anywhere. It's weird. But yeah, I'd love to know. I just want to know what the truth is. And before you all shout out, you can handle the truth. Maybe. But I'm fascinated by it. But I'm not obsessed. I just want to know what the truth is. I don't care about... Uh, I just, oh, you know, it seems to me a lot of the conspiracy stuff is mixed with truth, and then fantasy, and I can't dissect between, because I don't have the access to the information, plus I don't have the motivation to go looking for that information. Because, you know, I'm sure there's lots of information available. But then how true is it? How real is it? It's... I mean, really, if you want to have a really good laugh, go, go on YouTube and just look up interviews with people from the Flat, the Flat Earth Society. It's funny. It's, like, really funny. And some of the arguments they give make sense. You know, it's... It's weird. I'd just like to say another thing. Um, I've only got, like, 639 subscribers. So, thank you to each one of you for subscribing. And... Most of you, when you subscribed, I had a lot of my old recordings on there. Hundreds and hundreds of recordings from the past. As well as a lot of podcasts, like just, just the audio and stuff like that. And some videos of podcasts. Well, what I've done is I've got rid of everything except the 
most popular video that I've had for forever. I've kept that. Let's try, uh, try and stay awake hypnosis challenge. And that's my most popular video that I've had on the various different YouTube channels over the years. Because I stopped really putting too much energy into YouTube in about 2014. So now this is almost like a little comeback because the podcasts that I do are going really well. So I've been focusing more just on the audio side of things, just making podcasts. And the good thing is I don't have to, there's, there's less preparation. You know, I don't have to get all made up and make my hair look nice and everything like now. So, although there's only, I think, like four videos on my YouTube channel at this moment, on the Thursday, the 18th of August, 2022, my aim, and I'm not sure why, but my aim is to make regular recordings, to make regular videos, and basically record my podcasts as a video as well as a podcast and continue daily to do this so to do a let me boy to sleep daily to do a deep sleep whisper every day this is a new thing it's not a new thing I've done it before but it's generally something that I don't normally do which is a let me boy to sleep whisper version. I don't do that. This is, to me, okay, I have done it, but I didn't call it the let me boy to sleep. They were just uh, whisper vlogs that I did in the past. So I thought that maybe I could do like a morning let me boy to sleep whisper one like my morning and perhaps go through the news and but only nice kind of at the very least neutral stories nothing horrible I don't want to talk about that stuff if you want that just watch the news I want my podcasts and my videos to be a, a nice space you know Maybe I can be a little bit of company to those that are on their own, or I mean, I'm on my own, so I'm company for myself. I think I'm pretty good company for myself. That sounded weird when I said it out loud. So, it's basically just me, cup of tea. Try not to show my armpits too much, and it's also a podcast. So, even though only a few people will watch the videos for now, a lot more people will be listening to the podcast uh, on the various podcasts I post it. So, thank you to everybody for listening or for watching and I, I'm not sure if I said it already but only listen or watch when you can safely close your eyes I hope I did say that I normally do trust me I, I've been saying it for 16, 17 years sometimes I'll forget but I do try and remember to say it that's just in case you fall asleep so I guess I just wanted to say that part of the process, part of why I'm doing this is to help you to maybe relax a little bit. So by making a video that lasts for maybe half an hour, an hour maybe, depending. 
depend, <laughs> depending on the noise in the background, depending upon the camera if it runs out, you know. I don't know if I've got enough energy to last an hour, hopefully. Not in me, but in that ding. And I've got a food delivery at one o'clock, so yeah, that's fine. It's three minutes past twelve now. I couldn't believe it last night. Well, yesterday afternoon, about, I don't know, it's six o'clock in the afternoon. Is it afternoon or evening? It's that cut off point, isn't it? Isn't it? For me, it kind of turns into evening. And in the winter, it's definitely evening because it's dark outside. But five o'clock, it's dark outside, but it's still afternoon in the winter. And like the deep winter, like January time, it starts getting dark sometimes two thirty, three 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's still afternoon. So six o'clock is kind of the evening, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, yesterday, just after six p.m., I went to the shop, the local shop. I needed to buy a few little bits. What did I get? Got a couple of packs of Cokes, a couple of brownie bars, they're nice, they're really good, they're, I can't show you because I don't have one on me, well I can but I'm going to have to wait till I boo it out, but it's, that's wrong, I don't know why I said that, sorry, I can show you, <laughs> I mentioned that, oh, I'll show you tomorrow, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so I um, I it keeps its colour through the whole process. <laughs> it does. It's nice though. It's really like crispy and soft. It's like a mixture. And normally, when I go to that shop, it's usually just a bunch of crap. You know, it's the not. It's nothing nice, in a way, like, you know, like in a bakery, or if you get something from the supermarket, and it's nice quality stuff, in that little shop, it's a bit, it's got branded stuff, but some of the other stuff is just a bit, just, uh, you know, nothing bad, but just very, just not much choice, really. But it's not supposed to be. It's, it's not supposed to be choiceful. It's supposed to be expensive, and it is. But you can get two brownies. These bars are about that long, so as what twelve inches. And there, I think it's two for two pound, which is good value. Or is it three pounds or something like that? So I come out, I buy what I needed. I come out and then I thought, wait a minute. I need some coffee. Because at the, the bare minimum, I like to have one cup of coffee a day when I wake up. I like with my breakfast. A cup of tea doesn't do the job. A nice cup of coffee. It's just what I like. Sometimes I'll have two cups of coffee in a day. But never more than that because it sends me weird. It does. It has a weird effect on me. But generally, a nice cup of coffee. First thing in the morning with my breakfast. And I eat ready break. With, usually with dried fruit. Like raisins and stuff like that on top. Not sugar. Although I ran out so I had to have some sugar. This was the last few days. But I've got some... <laughs> you know, if you ever wonder to yourself, why is it called Let Me Boil You To Sleep? 
just listen to what I'm talking about. It's boring. <laughs> what is he talking about? Raisins now. Yeah, that's what I do. I talk about raisins and ready break, which is it's porridge really. It's sort of quick porridge. So what I do is I microwave the milk for 3 minutes and 10 seconds. It's like a bowl of milk. and That's how long it takes for it to be ready. Trial and error came to this conclusion. I boil the kettle. Sometimes I put the coffee into the cup first or the mug. That reminds me I need to buy myself a bigger mug. Because I seem to be like, this isn't a particularly big cup of tea. If you can see, look, there's tea in there. It's not whiskey. I can't drink whiskey. I wish I could, but I can't. It's... I have done. In fact, that's not totally true, because it is true that I have done. But what is it? Jack Daniels? I can drink Jack Daniels. But that's not... It doesn't taste anything like whiskey to me. It's a different taste. And out of all the spirits, because I don't, no, I don't mean poor ghosts and stuff like that, uh, weedy balls and stuff, no. What I'm talking about is... What am I talking about? Can you hear that in the background? Trimmers. Yeah. 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 Continuous. Well, it's not continuous because it keeps stopping, but then again, then again, then again. Yeah, whiskey. I'm not really a fan. So when I was about 17, 16, 17, I lived on my own in a flat above the chip shop that I worked in. That's when I was 16. So I moved in there 1987. I think it was like end of March. And I was 16 at the end of the August before. So I was 16 and a half, I guess. Is that August, September, October, November, December, January, February? Yeah, just over 16 and a half years old. I remember moving in there because um, it's quite a big deal, really, having my own home for the first time. And that Christmas... So, that'd be 1987 Christmas. I remember that I got, I think it was a bottle of, it might have been Malibu, or a bottle of Bacardi, and about eight cans of lager. And that's what I was, I was drinking Christmas Eve. And I remember just hanging about, just hanging about, and there was no, I might have been invited to Christmas dinner somewhere, but I didn't go. And I ended up having Christmas dinner with one of the customers of the chip shop. Seriously, can you believe it? I was just walking around drunk, and... One of the customers said, like, pull me in. I said, are you okay? I said, yeah. Yeah. He said, what, what are you doing? Wandering the streets. And I said, yeah. I said, I don't know. I wasn't drunk, drunk, just merry, I guess. This was Christmas Day. And... But there was no more shops open. I couldn't get any more alcohol. So I didn't have much left. And 
they invited me back, him and his wife, and I knew their son. He was probably a couple of years older than me, so I ended up having Christmas dinner with them. And it's weird because I didn't appreciate it. I didn't. I think I said thanks for the grub. Where's the pies? I, I think at one point, um, I remember one of them. I think it was the, the mother saying to me just before I left. Why did you think there'd be a present under the tree for you? And why did you have to open all of them to find it? Why would there be one? We didn't know you were coming. I don't know. And I left. So I pretty much ruined their Christmas day, I suppose. But hopefully not. I was a kid. I was, I was 16. I was probably a Pretty about the same height I am now. Seven foot four. But I was skinny. Like skinny, skinny, skinny as skinny can be. Like absolutely like a little child, really. I wasn't much really. I was like a... Instead of 16, I was more like a 13, 14 year old. I was very immature. Very tight, very petite, very... Had, wasn't really very well developed. I mean, everything worked, but... Some would say too quickly. But, you know, I was just tiny. I was not mentally mature, and I wasn't physically matured. Some would say no 16-year-olds are, but I would disagree with that. Some 16-year-olds... I mean, some 10-year-olds look like men. Even at school they did. There was this kid at school. And even in... Uh, yeah, even in primary school, even in junior school, when I was ten, he was a man. I was going to say he had hair in all the right places, but that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> he was a man. He was big. He was... In, Seriously, in the first year of high school, he was as big as my dad. And my dad's a big man, big bloke. He was his size. But he didn't know it. He was almost like a... A St. Bernard that doesn't know how big they are. Because I used to have a St. Bernard when I was a kid. A St. Bernard dog, that is. Not, um... The chocolate bar, I don't know, whatever else a St. Bernard might be. And well, I didn't own a person called St. Bernard, I didn't keep a human in a cage. I'm gonna call you St. Bernard. Now dance for me. You know, nothing like that. And I used to take her, her name was Misty. I used to take her for a walk, and she was so big, I couldn't handle her. And she used to get scared of other dogs that were, like, tiny. I suppose to her, she probably thought it was a rat. She, but she didn't know how big she was. She didn't understand the concept. I was a bit like that with my belly. But I knew I hadn't seen parts of my body for quite a while. So I knew I had a belly. And then one day, I got undressed. I figured I had to eventually. And I saw myself in the mirror. And I was in this position where I was running from one room to another. And it was a mirror that I hadn't seen before. I wasn't at home, I was somewhere else. And I couldn't believe, like, that's not me. No. Turns out it wasn't. I was in someone else's bedroom. <laughs> no, it was me. I was like, no, that's bad. A similar thing happened with my top of my head. I got a bald patch. Now, I knew I had a little bit of a bald patch because I did a video a couple of years back and I bent over to far or 
or something. And uh, what the hell is that? It's almost like during the night someone's come in and just gently shaved a little circle, a little crop show circle. It's an alien. I thought there'd be an alien spacecraft in there somewhere, but it's nothing. Unless it embedded in my brain. But, but, but I did not realise how bad it is or how prominent it is until I was um, staying in a hotel recently and it had mirrors all around so I could look at the front of me and see the back of my head. I was not happy. Just, just, just really, really not impressed. And I don't understand it because I've always had a thick, thick bit, like big hair. Not big hair, but like thick and curly hair. Whenever it gets a, past a certain length, it's curly and frizzy and stuff. Not no more. It's just I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I mean, it's it's just hair, and you know what? For years and years and years, I shaved my head. Pretty much every year for twenty years, I've, at least once a year, I shave my head completely bald. Sometimes regularly, but you know, I've been doing it for twenty years since two well two thousand and three, so nearly twenty years. And now, I always had that idea in my head that if I ever went bald, it wouldn't matter because I spent a lot of my time as an adult bald. I was wrong. Completely wrong. So I'm sitting in a chair, so I'm not using my legs. So it wouldn't matter if I lost one. No, it would. As an extreme example, but it's like just because I'm not using it now doesn't mean you won't want it later. I miss my hair. Going bald, and I'm worried that I'm going to be one of those people that has thick, because I've got quite a thick hair when it gets longer, thick curly hair all the way around with this little helicopter landing patch on the top. I'm not worried that helicopters will try and land on it, but just I don't know. I don't want it. I don't want that. So there. <sighs> oh yeah. So uh, NASA, <laughs> bloody hell, NASA's ascending a rocket into space. I don't know when August the twenty ninth lift off for an unscrewed lunar test flight. Not uncrewed lunar test flight. I was going to say if it's unscrewed, I think I'll fall apart on it. I'm pretty sure they're sending a goat up there. So I'll be interested. I want to watch it. Okay. I'm just trying to find something interesting. U.S. 
Oh, it's funny. Enoch, not Elok. Elok. What's his name? The richest man in the world. Who makes the electric cars? Elok. Ulok. You know the man, anyway. He he posted on he posted on Twitter that he was he was going to buy Manchester United. But he was just joking and apparently a lot of people are upset. Oh well. Okay. So that's that has that front page. I'll go away. Scorsin's pace of increases. Ah, oh, there's a picture of what is this? Federal Reserve officials agreed their monetary policy meeting on oh. retail spending is steady. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good news. I don't know much about that stuff. But, okay, what's the next page? Elon Musk, that's it. But I've not seen it. My brain remembered me. Companies must pay millions. Uh, federal officials are cracking down. Prosecutors sue. Oh, blimey. FDA. It's very difficult to sales. Okay, sales surge expected from Bill's incentives. Climate law provides tax breaks, rebates to upgrade heating and cooling systems. That's good. What is this? Rabbit's feet. Meadow donned a creative outfit for the bunny costume. What? Wow. Um, ba bum bum bum. Cook my cut book deal money. This is nice. Well, I prefer him anyway. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo doesn't have to pay back the money he earned from a 5.1 million book deal after a New York State judge Tuesday dismissed an earlier order. Is that a proper sentence? After a New York State judge Tuesday dismissed there's no, like, apostrophe or anything. What was the book? It's a memoir published October 2020 about how Mr. Cuomo handled... The, okay. Oh, here's another bit about the NASA moon rocket. The moon rocket arrived at the launch pad in Cape Canaveral on Wednesday ahead of its but flight in less than two weeks. Ah, cool. So you get to you. you oh, it said you paid for extra legroom. Do you get anything else? Carry on, Dawn Gilberson. Many of us wonder whether we should splurge on those cushy economic seats near the front of the plane, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, dear. Um, Apple gadgets to buy or skip right now. Oh, they don't seem to like the Apple Watch here. iPhone, iPads. iMacs. Okay. Apple TV. I've got Apple TV. 
So she, this woman, uh, personal technology, Joanna Stern, she's given her opinion on what to buy and what not to buy. iPhones, no, nope, nine yet. No iPhone buying right now. Unless it's the new iPhone SE. It's the last remaining iPod, iPhone with a home button. I don't know who Joanna or jo Jonah Stern is, so I don't know what she's talking about. iPads, but you know what an iPhone is, don't you? Yeah, I know, but I don't. If someone's a critic or a reviewer of technology, you need to get to know where they're coming from and if... Uh, you, if you kind of agree with what they say generally so then when you see something new and you're like oh I'm going to take her word for it <clears throat> iPads ok Apple Watch nope I don't care the boss is in it look at this this is an advert here Dow Jones News Fund journalists don't just write stories they make them up they create them no no so don't say that they record history and they cause trouble I find it funny when you see a, a journalist get promoted and then they're on television interviewing people and the way they all try and be clever and try and um, make the interviewee look silly, like live on TV and how often they fail. I do find it mildly amusing. I think they seem to forget that when they interview someone that gets interviewed all the time, the interviewee is expecting the person on television to be like trying to make them look ridiculous or to catch them out. Sports. Wow, well, got all the way to the sports. There was nothing I could read out that was of any niceness, really, at all. Sports, just one page of sports, really. How can it be only one page of sports? But opinion, there's one, two, three three opinion pages oh business and finance I guess Wall Street Journal is going to have a bit of that in it let's see if there's any nice things Amazon searches for film executive this is by Eric Schwartzell and Jessica Tungel Amazon.com Inc. is searching for a senior movie studio executive to help lead its growing entertainment diversion or division, turning to rivals for a chance to poach an experienced Hollywood player. Okay. That's it, really. i tell you what I watched today. Uh, it's She-Hulk on Disney Plus. It's okay. It's kind of um, a 
love that. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. It's not. It's not a moo moo cow. It's a trimmer. I. I thought it was okay. It is some funny bits in it in the She Hulk. It's kind of it's it doesn't seem to be aimed at adults. It seems to be more aimed like specifically aimed at young or I don't know like teenagers slash children, but like not adults. It's sort of but it, it, there are some funny bits, like a lot of the Disney stuff, the the Marvel films and TV shows. They do have comedy in them, which is good. Which I, that's what I like. One of the things I like about it. Yet the DC movies seem to sometimes take themselves way too seriously. Sometimes seems to sports bet firms curtail marketing. Well, that's a good thing if we see less adverts for betting firms. Sports betting companies are revisiting their game plans. Gambling operators have been pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into the pursuit of new customers. As more states have adopted online sports betting, now those companies are under pressure to rein in spending because they have said they plan to turn a profit next year. So from that I take it that these online gambling companies have spent all their money and pumped every bit of money that's coming into them back on advertising. So they decided to spend less on advertising and actually have a profit. And I realised that's just what I read out. It's just repeating what I've already just been told. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's like, okay, cool. Could you imagine? They might have a billion dollars coming in and spending a billion dollars or after they might have, I don't know, a hundred million to have to spend, or thirty million to spend for the year on running the thing, and then they spend the rest on advertising. If they just have a year off advertising, as a billion dollars profit, not bad for a Sunday lunch. Sports betting has exploded across the UK after a Supreme Court ruled court ruling in 2018 cleared the way for states to establish sports wagering. Sports betting has been legalised in 36 states and the District of Columbia nationwide sports betting generated. Okay, so there's a full stop there, sorry. Columbia nationwide sports betting generated about 3 billion in the first half of 2022 up about 66% from the first half of last year. So it's still quite a small business in America. I mean, I remember, is it 365 betting? Their profits, absolutely huge profits. Now they're not just area of a UK company but they're not just based in the UK they're on lines as worldwide I guess that that is where the real money is I think betting websites apps and stuff blimey I mean in my country I think gambling and betting is fine we have betting shops. Um, there 
are places where there's casino, casinos, casinos, but that's like a special regulated thing. Uh, but actual betting shops, you can just go in and you can watch as TV screens all around, and you can watch uh, like horse racing or dog racing um, live as it happens, as so you can put a bet on. That's been a long time since I went into one of these things. But it's... I think they used to get a lot of their money from the machines that they had in there. The gambling machines. And then, they, then the online thing came along. So, quite often... It was almost uh, like well planned. There'd be a bookies, which is a, a betting shop, next door to a pub, and then maybe there'd be a cafe somewhere to eat next door to that. So it's it's almost like everything's there. So someone who likes that lifestyle, who wants to drink, make a bet, has something to eat go back and collect their winnings and spend that on alcohol in the pub or go back into the pub to drown their sorrows from losing or whatever and it used to be a place where people would congregate a certain type of a group of people that liked that lifestyle um, I've known people that that's all they did They'd be all day in the pub and the bench shop between the two. And they were happy, so hey, good for them. Not really my... I, mean, I, can, I can see it'd be fun to do maybe once a week. If you're good at gambling, you know, if you know how to do it, but... I've never really made much of an attempt I think I was quite lucky because when I was a kid I was about 14 probably about 14 and my brother who was 18 he spent all his money gambling so he was trying to, um, it wasn't the, he basically he needed money and he was short of money and well, I couldn't help him out because I didn't, I was 14. I just laughed at him, no I didn't. And he made a bet and he, he, he bet, I remember him coming to me and said I've bet all my money, which at that time he probably had like 20 pound, it wasn't a lot, but he lost it all. And he'd bet it on a horse race or something like that. And I remember seeing him now. It affected him. And I thought, nah. There's no point. That's just... It's, what's the point in that? And I, I had another friend that I used to live with in the 90s. 1990s. And he was, he was addicted to gambling. That was his thing. But the reason really was he had a really, really big win at the dogs. And he won like 30 grand. And he spent the rest of his life chasing that. What well, the rest of his life, but then the the next ten years or whatever, because at that time he was still he was only thirty, so it might be I don't know how many years, but he had a huge win. And sometimes he would win as well, but generally, I don't think so. It was. You know, it's great. You might have five thousand pounds or dollars. 
I've won five thousand dollars. Yeah, but how much did you lose the rest of the year? Fifteen. So yeah, you got five thousand dollars in your hand. But it doesn't mean anything if you've lost fifteen thousand in the last seven months. You know what I mean? So yeah, you're getting it in it. Spending my life in a sh I might get myself a dog. Moderna WSJ, the future of everything. It's an advert here. The future of style. How are high tech? materials and AI changing the way we shop and what we buy. How are legacy fashion brands thinking about inclusivity and the metaverse's impact on how they design, market and sell? Metaverse. Join us for a wide ranging conversation with industry leaders about what's next for the business of style. That's no point me. I mean, look what I wear. I'm the least stylish person in the entire metaverse. I really am. I've got no sense of style. That was an advert for something. Look, Amazon tests TikTok style portal. That's interesting. This interests me. I've never been so excited. App feature would let users share a photo and video stream of products to sell. Wow. You know what? I see. business idea there. <laughs> I really do. It's, uh, oh man. Okay, so even Amazon.com wants to be a little like TikTok. It's testing a feature in its app that would show us, it would show users a TikTok style photo and video feed of products for shoppers to share with other users. It's about time, really, isn't it? I mean, some you, some of the Amazon do have a video and stuff where you can see, but it's not personal. It's it's very generic. How cool would it be for someone to say, "Hey, I don't know what that means, but like, look what I've got to buy to sell." I don't know what I'd sell, but like, look at this microphone. Because <laughs> you know how sexy I am. And I know that I'd sell nothing, but if someone was uh, a little, a tiny little bit sexier than me, they could probably pull it off like, it's like licking the, like, the microphone. Uh, uh, only $249. Mm. I'll even sign it myself for an extra seven thousand dollars. <laughs> Maybe I'll be interested in seeing how that progresses. Yeah, TikTok. Uh, it's not really my thing. First of all, I'm a little bit resident, if that's the right word, in infringing upon children's spaces. You know, I don't go into a playground in the park and sit in the swings, because that's for children. In the same way, online, I don't go 
and post videos on TikTok because it's for kids and teenagers. I know a lot of adults do, but I don't because it's not really my thing. It's just, it's, it's not aimed at me. And I've seen how adults have ruined Facebook. Facebook was for kids. It was for young, young people, children, young adults. That's what Facebook was really aimed at when it started. You know, students. <laughs> then Facebook realised, firstly, this is my opinion, adults found it interesting. Secondly, adults, older adults, are the ones with the money. My washing machine is now spinning, so I don't know if you can... <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember, thank you for watching. Be kind to yourself, because you deserve to be happy. Be gentle. Lots of love. Bye.